Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Complex Variables, where we're going to explore complex analysis in depth, but first we need to cover complex numbers, and today's topic is the polar form of a complex number. So let's let z equal x plus yi be a point in the complex plane. Now the angle theta that the vector makes with the real analysis is called the argument of z, and it's denoted by theta is equal to the argument of z. Now theta is one value in an interval of length 2 pi, right? Because if you think of the circle, it's 2 pi, the angle, you know, from 0 to 2 pi. But any interval of length 2 pi will work, and it's often used minus pi to pi. Now let r equal the, the absolute value of r or the modulus of, of z, I mean absolute value of z or the modulus of z, and then we covered this in the previous video, and it's the distance from the origin to the point z. The polar form of a complex number is this, r, so if z is the, the complex number, it's r, which is the modulus, times the cosine plus i sine of theta, and when I, uh, in, I have a picture in, in a second, this will even make more sense. Now, r and theta are called the polar coordinates of z. If we know r and theta, then we know the exact point in the complex plane. And this can be abbreviated as using this form. So the point z, complex number, is r cis theta. Now, I actually don't know if they call it cis or kiss or just cis of theta, but the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta is, is abbreviated with this. Now here's a picture of what we just described. So we have a point Z in the complex plane, the real numbers and the imaginary component. Now this is distance X, this is distance Y, and the angle that it makes with the real number or the real axis is theta. And then you can do some using basic trigonometry. You know, the cosine of theta is x over r, and you can kind of back solve that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta. And you can also, this distance here, which is y, you can say the sine of theta is y over r, and then back solve for y, and it's r times sine of theta. And so that's how we get this uh, point here. So it's theta and r is what, how it's represented in polar form. Now properties of complex numbers in polar form is if we have two complex numbers z1 and z2, right? z1 is this represented in polar form, z2 in polar form is this, so it has some modulus and some angle that it creates with the real number line. The product of two complex numbers, it can be represented in polar form like this. You just take the product of the moduluses, or the moduli, I actually don't know that either, which one is correct, and you add the angles. And then that's the new representation of this product. Now, in shorthand term, it's this, R1, R2, which are the moduluses of these two numbers, uh, CIS, theta 1, theta 2. Now let's prove it. So Z1 and Z2, here are the two complex or, you know, the complex numbers or the points in the plane, and we take the product. So the R1 and R2 clearly come out, and then these uh, terms, you know, you foil them first, outer, inner, last, and you come up with this. We covered multiplication of complex numbers in a previous video, so I'm, here's the real component of this product, and here's the imaginary component. There's a property trigonomic property, the sum of angles, that equals a cosine, and there's a trig identity for sine of the sum of angles, that equals this, but that's what we wanted to show, that the product can be represented like this. Now, the division of two, num two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, is this, it's the ratio of the moduli, the moduluses, and then it's the difference of the angles between Z1 and Z2. Shorthand notation is this. Let's quickly go through that. Z1 divided by Z2. Here are the numbers in polar form. Um, we take it, this number times 1, and then in, in a previous video we looked at the division of complex numbers. You essentially take it times the complex constant of the denominator, which is this piece here, 
right? You just change that sign, and this is one. Well, this the two real numbers come out front, and when you multiply these two complex numbers, you get this, and then the numerator is this. Well, cosine squared plus sine squared is a famous identity. That's one, and then this here it's a trig identity of the difference of angles the cosine of the difference of angles this is equal to this and then the, there's a trig identity for this but that's what we wanted to show that, that the difference or the ratio of complex numbers can be represented like this in complex form and we're finished now the moivre's theorem is and i can only get close because I, I have a sort of a southern draw you know, American accent, but it's De Moivre's theorem. And so let Z be a complex number with modulus R and argument Z. So if we know R and Z, then we instantly know where Z is in the complex plane. <clears throat> and we're currently going to do this for only positive integers, one, two, three, etc. We'll expand it in the next video. So Z raised to the nth power which in polar form is this, and the de Moivre's theorem says you take the n to the r and then you just multiply the angle times n. And that's actually pretty cool. It really simplifies because multiplying this out would be incredibly hard. And, and as mentioned, this will be expanded to all integers in the next video, but currently only positive integers. So we'll prove it by induction. And so clearly it's true for n equals 1. If you put n equals 1 everywhere, those two pieces are indeed equal. So we assume it's true for k, and then we show it that for n equal k plus 1, it must be true too. So the induction step is that we, we, show, we assume that it's true for k. So this and this are equal. Now, if we multiply both sides times the same quantity, and what we're going to multiply it by is one of these, right? So in this piece here to both sides. But on the left-hand side, it's clearly you just raise the exponent by one. But on this side, you know, we multiply it. Now, this r times r raised to the k is r to the k plus one. And then we just showed that the multiplying two complex numbers in polar form, you just, you take the product of the modulus and then you add the angles, which is k plus one theta. And that, and that's it. And that's what we wanted to show. So this is, is so this is true, the Moivre's theorem. Now, a quick example. In the complex plane, let's evaluate this point. So let's look at, bring it down. Now, raise to the third power, according to de Moivre's theorem, 8 to the third, and then you take 3 times the 40. The 4 goes in, 2 to the fourth, and then 4 times the 60. But then the division of two complex numbers is the division of the, of the moduli, and then you take 120 minus 240, and that's what this is. We just showed this on the previous page. Then, of course, 8 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, you can show that that's 32. Now, let's expand this. So that means z is equal to this, right? That's This is shorthand notation for this. Some people will factor out the 32 and take it times this. But the cosine of minus 120 is 1 half. And the sine of minus 120 is minus radical 3 over 2. And then that simplifies to this. So this is the complex number that we needed to evaluate. Now, let's show that an equation for a line passing through points Z1 and Z2 is given by this equation here. The argument of this equation is zero. If any Z that satisfies that, then that creates a straight line in the complex plane. So let's look at that. So the argument of this number equals zero. Remember, the argument is the angle that it creates with the real number line. And if that angle is zero, the argument is zero, that implies that the imaginary number of this equation is zero, right? If 
the angle zero, that means we're on the real axis, so the imaginary piece is zero. Well, that says that this equation is equal to r, some, I mean, uh, lambda, where lambda is some real number. This, right? Now, if we multiply this to the other side, we get this equation, and this is it. This is the equation of a line, which says, if we look at this, that these two vectors are multiples of each other, and that's exactly a line. And that'll actually make more sense in this picture that I'm getting ready to show you, which means the vectors are multiplied. The vectors. Let's see the graph. So we have Z1 and Z2. Those are points, the two points, the known points in the complex plane. And if we create vectors to them, then we can create this difference vector, right? Z2 minus Z1. Then we need to pick a Z such that Z minus Z1 is some multiple of this, right? It has to be pointing in the same direction. So any Z that creates z minus z1 a multiple of this that all those z's create a straight line in the complex plane going through points z1 and z2 that's what this says now the last uh, piece we'll cover uh, prove that the argument of the product of two complex numbers is equal to the sum of the arguments of the complex numbers so if we look at the argument of this product and according to the theory up above, that is the pro the argument, right, comes over as the, the product of the two moduli times the cosine of the sum of the angles, I plus I sine of the sum of the angles. Well, the argument of this is clearly the angle, which is that, but that's the argument of Z1 plus the argument of Z2, and then we're, then we're finished. Okay, so the, the next video will be roots of a complex number. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.